it wasn't a story that I brought up, but I'm interested in this Walmart fulfillment center. And um, uh, honestly, I'm a little concerned. So basically, the, according to what I'm reading here in the notes, it's uh, a pilot to replace like to turn Walmarts into fulfillment centers and using robots mm -hmm. um, to stock shelves. And I'm a little concerned. Um, I mean, you can't, not that you can stop progress, but like Walmart is the largest employer <laughs> in the United States. So uh, if they're replacing their people with robots, I'm just wondering, like, how are they going to eat? So I'm like, I, I think it's kind of cold, but I'm also kind of concerned, I guess. I think it'll be interesting to see. I feel like unless you can perfectly place items on shelves and keep unless Skynet takes the human equation out of everything like I'll be interested to see how this robot can go find and pick up the item and the example I'll use is at Christmas time I was looking for something and Target had one of them and it wasn't like I could tell someone, I, I knew they had one in the store. I know, I knew unless someone stole it, computers don't lie. Um, so there, the, the item was somewhere in the store. So I went in search of it. This happened over the summer too with a fan at, at Home Depot. But um, mm -hmm. I wanted I, I wanted the, the thing that they had. It was sold out online and it was kind of like my last chance at getting it. And I had to walk all over the store to get to find it. And it was just on a random shelf. It was near the toy section, but um, it was just on a random shelf. So I wonder like, how well is this going to work unless everything is perfectly placed? It's in its correct place. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, that's unless, they, unless because... they put tiles on everything and then <laughs> the robots yeah, can yeah, find the tiles. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. That's an interesting point because, like, robots, like, they're more efficient, but like, they're they're not always, you know, they're not always prepared to deal with the unknown. So, uh, you know, I feel like there probably has to be some people working there, and then obviously there would be jobs to like service the robots and things like that. But, uh, you know, I do, I just, I just wonder, you know, as things advance, and this kind of gets into like the whole UBI conversation, uh, you know, universal basic income, it's like, eventually, that's something we're gonna have to think about, because these robots are taking people's jobs. And um, eventually, we're gonna have to get to a point where uh, people have to survive in other ways. So it'll be interesting to see how that all works out. It looks like uh, specifically with this one, it's this robot would take the place of um, just like things on shelves in a warehouse setting where there shouldn't be people touching it. Um, mm -hmm. They would still have human associates, not that people, customers, I should say, touching it. So they should be able to find things. Um, human human associates, I like that, human associates, uh, would be the ones <laughs> who would handpick things like meat, vegetables, and fruit, which makes sense because i don't know how you i don't know maybe there are robots that could distinguish like is this rot watermelon ripe and i could just see <laughs> <laughs> me personally i'd oh. rather have the robots touching the vegetables and fruits that i'm going to put in my mouth uh you know that people can get all their germs <laughs> on you know that you know the pandemic's got everybody ocd i'm thinking i don't want people with germs all over my food but yeah <laughs> it is but yeah so they're trying to it looks like they're trying to catch up with amazon and trying to fulfill that way um which everybody's trying to catch up with amazon <laughs> at this point and wondering when we're gonna get back i mean i for a lot of folks i i don't know if they're going to get back into actually shopping in stores because the online and fulfillments and the ordering online and picking up and at targets and walmart has been pretty helpful and makes you not have to deal with people <laughs> as much and i think a lot of people well, also... are liking that beyond the pandemic What's interesting about that, too, is like everyone acts like we're moving into the future, but really we're in some ways we're traveling back in time because the Internet is essentially catalog sales, again, where you have pages and pages of items you can choose from and, and you just have, now have a website, you know, pages and pages on a website that you can choose from. So it's really like a very similar concept if you think about it. And like I look at so our shopping habits are way more online other than your perishable food items. Um, 
the one thing I will say though for the non-perishable food items like because occasionally we do most of our food shopping at Target um, but you're in Target right and you go pick something hey I'm here for strawberries and milk oh I'm gonna go over and grab whatever um, I, I don't feel like the selection they're not keeping the rest of the store stocked um, I don't blame them on, you know, things like toilet paper and bread running out at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, no one could keep up with demand on that. But like, I look at least in the South Hills Target, which I feel like it's in way more foot traffic than some of the other ones. They're definitely having, they're either having a problem keeping the, the shelves stocked or they're not worried about keeping as much on hand mm -hmm. versus I had to go get a new pair of glasses out in Robinson and I stopped out there and their selection outside of the food area was much better and they had much more hmm. things across the store um, that either were empty shelves at the, the South Hills Target or looked like they they never like the, the item never made it to the store like i don't know wow. I, I just would but, but i do wonder like will everything just for non-perishables continue online just from a sheer hey i don't need to carry this in the store i could use that space for something else well i think so because i think also like it's more convenient for the people who are buying it so it, it's easier for them and they have a better selection you can get better prices so it's like in every way you win online and even with perishable items i mean there are people like me who i don't even i get my groceries delivered now like i don't go out to the store for anything um sometimes i'll go to las palmas because i can walk there but um yeah i mean uh, you can get anything delivered like literally anything And I, I didn't think to compare because I live by the Robinson one. If I if I end up at a Target, is usually the one I end up at, and they've always seemed to be pretty stocked. So I didn't realize that other folks that like the South Hills ones wasn't as. I don't know if it's just because it's kind of at a, the South Hills ones at like an interesting crossroads of of a bunch of different areas. So it's probably mm -hmm. an easy one to get to if you're anywhere in and or amongst like the Bridgeville slash. St. Clair, so like that whole that whole region kind of it's mm -hmm. kind of at the center of that um, versus I don't know Robinson like once you get past Robinson out towards the airport there there isn't as many homes and we're not there people aren't as densely packed in <laughs> um, as, as we are here but when, when you get into like that Oakdale Imperial um, moon area there's there's a lot of the people in that area but I, I feel like maybe not as much as the communities that the the south hill store services mm -hmm. but um I, that was just kind of what i found like i i was i was heading online because i couldn't find stuff in the stores mm -hmm. i don't well, know also if i trust my lunch meat and my strawberries to come i want to pick them or see them oh, before. It's wonderful. <laughs> it's wonderful. I don't have to smell anyone, look at anyone, wait in line, uh, listen to anyone. I just sit here at my, you know, either watching TV or doing office work. And then, uh, you know, I have somebody shopping for me. Oh, we can't find this. Can we replace it with that? Yeah, sure. And uh, then they just leave it at my store doorstep. I don't even have to talk to the driver when they arrive. They just drop my stuff off and leave. It's like it takes me instead of taking over an hour to grocery shop and now takes me 30 seconds because like with at least with Instacart, everything you've purchased throughout your life of Instacart is immediately saved in a uh, you've bought this before section. So I literally just open the bot before, click a few buttons and my groceries are uh, delivered. Poof. It's like it's amazing. Yeah, it's like magic. Oh, did they waive delivery fees during COVID? Is that what? I don't know because I paid like the hundred dollars a year where like okay. I, I can get as many as I want. So yeah, it looks like I think Joey in the chat room mentioned that 
they might have uh, waived the fees during COVID, which would be super cool. Ah, um, nice. That would be nice. 